Hello and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jose Laporte, and I'm blessed to be with you again today as we move on to part three of the weapons of our warfare. And to put it plainly, when we are given life in the spirit by Jesus Christ, having been born again in the spirit, the new spirit man longs for the things of God. It is sustenance to him. He hungers and thirsts for the things of God. And on the other hand, we are still flesh. Our, stum- our biggest stumbling block, we're wearing it for the duration of our life here on earth. And this nature longs for the things of the world. It just uh, goes after whatever, anything and everything that comes out of the darkness of this world, the garbage, the drivel, all that bad stuff. This is what the flesh longs for. It loves sin. Because again, the flesh is apart from God. So we have this dual nature at work in us, constantly struggling for control. They're at war with each other, constantly. Right? And the spirit man going one way, the flesh man going the other way. And it's basically, to put it into simpler terms, it's a huge race of endurance. Um, in high school, I ran uh, long distance. I was on the long distance running team, and it was grueling. Every day was a training day. Every day was a practice. Every day was, uh, I guess it was horrible. I mean, we would run for miles a day at a time. And it was so taxing on me physically, but I noticed that every day that I continued to run, right, that it got easier for me to run the race. It got easier for me to run the trails. It got easier for me to run the gauntlet, so to speak. And up until the point where I had built up a level of physical endurance that I was able to compete on race day. But in order for me to do that, I had to be consistent. I had to be, again, my training had to be deliberate. And the coach used to instill in us, he made us every day we had to run. We had to run. And that you didn't want to be last because then you would have to run more. And we built up a pretty solid running team where we were able to compete and we were very successful. Like we were blowing out other schools like nothing. Um, but again, it was the lifestyle that we had to live. We had to eat right. We had to eat the right things. We had to run. We had to practice. We had to stay hydrated. That was very important. So putting this, applying this to what I'm talking about now um, this race that we're running, being a race of endurance, the race of life, the race of a Christian, um, Christ already ran this race before us. And I'm thinking about a song right now. <laughs> I'm running a race. That's all way already <laughs> run. Uh, I know Pastor Jay's probably going to smile <laughs> when he hears that. But um, so Jesus ran this race ahead of us. We just have to follow his example. We have to follow in his footsteps. So what we, uh, again, we need to stay hydrated. Again, living water, stay fed. Again, the word. Um, And the endurance to run this race of life and to overcome the flesh that is dragging us down. It's literally dead weight. Um, Which which athlete's going to perform better on the day of the competition, the day of the race, right? Is it the athlete who's diligent, who does the work that is laid before him, the lifestyle, right? Uh, As I mentioned earlier, all the things that that entailed, or the other one who, you know, um, haphazardly or like, you know, he was half-stepping, so to speak. He didn't take his training seriously. He ate whatever he wanted, and, you know, who's going to who's going to run the endurance, you know, who's going to do the endurance race the best. Right. So, of course, the athlete who is diligent. And again, um, we need to be committed to studying the word of God, praying to God, spending time with him in fellowship and just fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit can open up the scriptures to us on a whole new level. And again, um just to going back to the scriptures again, the Lord says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you, right? So the Lord of all creation wants to teach you all that you need to know. He wants you to be a dynamic Christian. Again, not on your own strength, but something that he wants to do in you and he wants to glorify himself through you. Okay, and it's for his glory. Amen, to expand his kingdom. So 
in the last two parts, we established that we have authority in the spirit because of the finished work of Jesus Christ that we uh, we have now, the Lord has imparted to us. He's given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And what we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What we loose on earth will be loose in heaven. We can call on his name at any time because he does not sleep. He does not slumber. And his word is unbreakable. And as his word was still applicable in the time of the Bible, the Bible days, you know, in the time of the book of John and time of the book of Acts and throughout the Bible, that word is still relevant to us today. Again, remember, line upon line, precept upon precept. And when I think about line upon line, precept upon precept, to me, it's like someone building a brick wall because you have your first layer of first, you have the foundation, right? Then you have the first layer of bricks, right? That's the line, precept. That's the uh, cement that holds that first, that joins the two layers together, the next two layers. And the precept part being the cement um, is important because it holds the glue of the lines together. So line upon line, precept upon precept until again, you have this wall. That wall is going to be your insulation between the world and yourself. And there's going to be the insulation between yourself and the attacks of the enemy. And also the word of God, again, um, which I'm going to get into in today's scriptures. But the word of God literally is a suit of armor, literally a suit of armor that covers you from head to toe uh, and protects you from the attacks of the enemy and helps you to defend yourself. So. The word of God comes to us today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, which says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Again, remember last in the last part, we said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. Right? Again, this is just touching on the same thing. It's, you know, we are commanded here um, in the book of Ephesians to be strong in the Lord. And then the power of his might, not our might, but in his might, because, again, his might, he's the one that fights the fight. He's the one that does the work. He's the one where we we have the tools and they're only through him. They're only accessible through him. We have the victory only accessible through him. We have the ability to fight off the forces of the enemy only through him. Right. So moving on now. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 12, which says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Now remember part two, where part two says, again, um, that tearing down strongholds, right? And the... Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, right? The weapons of our warfare not being carnal. Again, this is just basically, it's saying the same thing, right? That we we don't war according to the flesh. Remember that these attacks against us in the spirit, they originate in these strongholds, in, in, in the forces of any. We have to fight them at the source. And that's with anything, anything that this life throws at us, anything that comes against us, we have to fight it at the source. And the way to fight it in the spirit is to use is to use the tools that God gave us. And that is through fellowship and through the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will contend with those who contend with us. Amen. Right. So moving on again, here's Ephesians chapter six, verse 13, which says, therefore, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Again, the whole armor of God. This is just a parable or an example where the people were able to understand what was being taught here because every everyone knew what a suit of armor looked like. And the word of God is likened to a suit of armor. Again, um, protecting and, you know, being able to take punishment to thwart punishment, to protect ourselves, but to deal out more punishment as well. Because in medieval times, the armor was heavier. The uh, the armor, even though the armor was heavy, the person who was wearing it got conditioned to using that armor. So when they swung, let's say, with uh, a downward, a downward swipe with the sword, again, it's not just the weight of the sword, the strength of the person wielding the sword, but it's also the weight of the armor, also pulling down, 
all at the same time. So it wouldn't be like a normal swipe of the sword. It would be uh, bolstered by the weight of the armor and the weight of the sword, plus the strength of the person wielding it, all combined, working together to deliver a devastating blow, right? Okay, um, now... Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. I love that. So I just want to point out one thing here. Now, this, this verse of scripture is important for the example that it sets out, right? So having girded your waist with truth, notice how that comes before having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, the belt of truth comes before the breastplate of righteousness because without the truth of God, that is his word, in your life, there can be no righteousness. Again, the belt of truth comes before the breastplate of righteousness because without the truth of God, his word in your life, there can be no righteousness. So without the belt of truth, that breastplate of righteousness will fall down. There's no belt to hold it up. So again, you need the truth of God, the truth of God to hold to to establish and hold up your righteousness, uphold your righteousness so you can live a righteous life because of the truth of God in your life. I love that. That's such an awesome awesome example. Okay, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 through 16 says, "And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I love that. The preparation of the gospel of peace, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The shield is protection, but it's also an offensive weapon I'm talking about in the physical, right? So when warriors would see the attack of the of their enemy coming, they would raise their shield to protect themselves, to absorb the incoming attack. Now, the shield was very heavy because it needed to be heavy enough to block the force of a swinging sword and the thrust and or the thrust of a spear. So remember how I mentioned before that with the weight of the armor, with the with the weight of the sword and the strength of the person swinging, it was a much more devastating swipe. So it's the same kind of thing, but the shield was had to be heavy enough and sturdy enough to block all of that weight, all of that force coming down, which sometimes was hundreds of pounds at a time. Okay, it needed to um, needed to block the, the the force of a swinging sword or the thrust of a spear. And when they trained, when the warriors trained. In ancient times, many drills and sparring sessions were strictly defensive based. So the warriors in training would spend entire days literally lifting their shield with their left or the non-dominant arm. So when it came time to the actual battle, to the war or to whatever skirmish they were going through, in the heat of that battle, they could do it quickly and as many times as was necessary to thwart the attacks of their enemy. So this was just constant, lift the shield, lift the shield, lift the shield, lift the shield, block, 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 block. Eventually you're lifting all of this weight of the shield in the physical. You got used to that weight. So it became, it was a quicker, snappier response time. So you could pull it up at a moment's notice just to protect yourself, to block all of this weight behind it, this, this devastating attack, right? Okay, moving on again, right? So... The, the attack is incoming, the attack, the attack is imminent, the warrior being trained, shield goes up, blocks the attack. Now, the retaliatory overhead slash or strike coming as a, a, a result, uh, after, immediately after the attack was blocked, right? A well-timed retaliatory strike could disarm the enemy entirely. Get that, right? And we're going to apply that to, to the spirit in a minute. So a well-timed retaliatory strike could disarm the enemy entirely. Studying the word is important because of this. Studying the word increases our faith. So when the enemy tries to sow doubt in our hearts, like, is God really with us, etc., you know, the lies that he's, he tries to, to, you know, to put in your heart. Our faith in God is propped up by his word, and it quells those doubts before they can take root. Again, is God really with you? Well, what does the word say, right? I will never leave you nor forsake you, right? Who sent you to do these things? By what authority do you do these things, right? I send you out into the world, right? 
um, be wise as serpents and as and gentle as doves, right? Um, who is the one that sent you? Um, go ye therefore preaching the gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The, the Great Commission. Again, um, the word is important because, again, in the spirit, and literally, like, we're being attacked. The word is on defense. Here come these fiery darts that, you know, the enemy's trying to sow doubt in your heart. You put up the shield of faith, our faith in God propped up by his word, right? The shield gets stronger because of spending time in fellowship with God, studying the word, your faith increases, right? The retaliatory strike, the word is compared in, in it's described in the word as a two-edged sword, right? Sharper than any, uh, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce to the very division of soul and spirit and joint and marrow, right? So the retaliatory strike, once the incoming attack is blocked, would disarm the enemy. So you use the word of God and you attack, you, 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 uh, your retaliatory strike can disarm the enemy. So you hit the enemy back with the word. And what, what happens? The enemy has to flee because he can't stand against the truth of God. Again, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is living and powerful. This word is alive. This word is living and breathing. This word is, is life to dead men. This, this, this word moves mountains. This word builds up the believer. Again, line upon line, precept upon precept. This is a wall that God sets up between us and the enemy, between us and the world, Right? This is this is how we're able to from the safe side of the wall we you know we can we can absorb the attacks of the enemy this wall that we built up line upon line piece up precept upon precept but we're we're firing back with the word of God right catapulting over the wall so to speak again um not literally in the spirit but just to give you an example right safe behind the wall retaliatory attack the catapult you know, the rock flies over the wall and smashes the enemy's forces, right? You know, uh, just to kind of simplify what's really going, what's going on here, okay? Um, now, moving on to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 through 20, and we're going to close it out here, right? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So we have the Word helmet of salvation, right? That the helmet prote protects the mind, the head, right? The, um, the, the helmet of salvation, um, the enemy would love to attack your mind, to attack you in your, that, that's your most vulnerable places in your mind. That's where the attacks of the enemy originate, um, that are manifest later on when you, when we're talking about habitual sin, you know, these things, um, manifest and uh in in the flesh based off of the thought that was implanted into your mind to oh they, you know maybe just this one little sin isn't going to be so bad right um the sword of the spirit which is which is the word of god praying always with prayer and supplication again this is constant communication between you and god praying always prayer and supplication in the spirit and being watchful to this end with all perseverance there's that word again perseverance Right. We can run this race because of what Jesus already did. He ran before us. Right. Perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that it that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. OK, let's talk about this boldness that's when we're in the word. Right. And we know the armor. We know the armor is already hooked up with to the nines. We, we, you know, we have all the parts of the armor. They're all in place. Again, this is just the word. You're strong in your word, fully trained. This is a lifestyle for you, right? You can boldly speak the word of God. That's in any situation because when the um, when the doubters come, when the attacks come, again, you can you can refute the person who's doubting the word of God. You refute the person who's trying to tear down the word of God because you know that you know the word of God. You're standing on the solid doctrine of truth. You're standing on the word of God and you can repel this attack. Right. And in the spirit, when the enemy tries to attack you, you use the word of God. The enemy can't stand the truth of God. He can't stand it. There's no way that he can resist the light. Not even, you know, your word, you can quell the enemy you, and, and, you, and you feed yourself too. Also, because based off of what God gave you, I mean, this is a bountiful, bountiful meal that the Lord has given you and it springs up into eternity. So even in this act, and you can see God moving based off of the word that you're speaking to this, whatever situation that's in front of you. 
and you're also encouraged again your faith is still growing because that word again is still living and powerful it's still at work in you it's still helping you grow it's still sustaining you amen hallelujah so this is how important it is to have the word of god i mean just completely submerged in it you know where you're eating and drinking the word that this is your sustenance in the spirit man and 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 it manifests to you in the physical, and you see just the blessings of God. Again, uh, a blessing from God could be just, you know, peace of mind, regardless of how bad things look. It can be just the strength to face each new day. It can be you just being able to, I mean, just not worry, because we tend to worry a lot. You know, because we're, we're people, we're human, but again, trusting and knowing how great God is because he's revealed it to you in his word. Again, the word of God is profitable for all things, line upon line, precept upon precept. Amen. So um, again, um, this is just awesome. And we thank God for his word. We just thank God for his provision through his word. We thank God just for the whole armor of God that is the word. And we thank God for the boldness that comes from it that we, we can boldly speak and proclaim our faith and, again, just live for Christ and expand his kingdom, right? Expand his kingdom, and it's for his glory and for his honor. Again, I love you all. I love you guys, really. Um, saints of God, be blessed and be encouraged and grow in your understanding and burn with the scriptures for his glory and his honor. In Jesus' name, God bless you.